off talking about um, how evolution happened of life, right? And so um, another big milestone was going to be plants, fungus, and animals colonizing land. That's going to be huge, right? And that happened about 500 million years ago, which if you think about it, really isn't that long ago if the Earth is 4.6 billion years old. So obviously that's going to be a big milestone. And um, if you think about something that has been spending its life in the water, coming up on a land is tough because you've got to deal with a bunch of issues. So organisms that had the adaptations that would allow them to get onto land are going to be the most successful and actually make it. Well, two big issues they got to deal with is dehydrating, right? So they're going to have to have some sort of adaptations to keep them from drying out. And the other one is reproduction on land. Totally different from reproducing in the water. Things that live in the water, a lot of them are just like, wee, and they throw their gametes out, and they don't care, and a sperm eats an egg, and life is great, right? When you get onto land, not so much. If you do that, it's all going to dry out, and it's not going to work. So you have to have internal fertilization and those kinds of adaptations to happen to make that work. So now let's talk about how the first cells came to be. So, like I said, about 3.5 to 4 billion years ago is when Earth's crust started to solidify, and that's when they think a lot of this stuff happened. Um, so, it's definitely thought that it was a chemical process, and um, there is a four-part hypothesis that kind of makes sense about this. Um, so, in order to be something that's considered to be living, you need to be capable of self-replication, and you need to have a metabolism. That right there is why viruses are not considered to be living, because they have neither of those, and they use our cells to do all of that stuff. Creepy. Don't worry. We'll spend a whole chapter on that. Okay, so what's kind of crazy, if you think about it, is the 19th century wasn't that long ago, and that's when they finally discredited the whole idea of spontaneous generation. But from the time of the Greeks until 19th century is when um, they believed in spontaneous generation. And what that is, is they would leave like some broth out and all of a sudden there would be mold growing in it a couple days later and they'd be like, that just came out of nowhere. Um, or they would leave meat out and all of a sudden maggots would grow out of it and they were like, those maggots just appeared, right? So um, what a fun time to live to think that that was how things worked. But now um, we know differently because of a guy named Louis Pasteur, right? So you've heard of pasteurization. And so he was going to be the scientist who said, uh-uh, there's something in there that's causing that to happen. Um, and so what he did is he boiled all of that broth and then he showed them, look, there's nothing growing in this because I killed everything that was living in there. Okay, so going along with that, we say that all life today on Earth comes from previously living organisms, right? So all life comes from life, and that's called biogenesis. So um, although that's how things work now, we do believe that early Earth had different conditions, and there has to be a way to explain how that first cell came to be. So there's a four-part hypothesis that um, is pretty credible and supported, um, and it is talking about how this happened. So um, I've listed them right here, and in the next video, we'll actually go into each of these and talk about how this actually works.